Greetings, everyone, and welcome. Hopefully this is working uh, as I see you start to trickle in. So uh, for those of you that are watching live, uh, feel free to throw in any questions that come up as we're watching this. Um, let me throw a little banner in there to remind people that it's okay to ask questions. Um, and so I don't want to take up too much time at the beginning because we've got someone that I'm super, super excited to talk about. Our guest today, she struggled with weight her entire life, which is something I know what that feels like. She says that she yo-yo dieted, which included raw veganism, intermittent fasting, calorie counting, portion control, and insane workouts, and I'm sure a million other things, all before she found the thing that finally worked for her, which we will discuss as we go along. Please welcome one of my favorite YouTubers and social media people, Amy Dean, otherwise known as Broccoli Mom. Hey, thanks so much, Jeremy, for having me on. Yeah, of course. Um... So uh, a couple people right from the get-go told me I needed to say hello to Abe and Romy. Oh, well, they're fast asleep at the moment, but I'm sure they'd appreciate that. <laughs> for now, for now, right? <laughs> for now, yeah. Fingers crossed they stay asleep. You never know. <laughs> I also will probably have children uh, walking through the background at some point. My Hopefully wife not screaming. My... <laughs> no, that's, they, they usually don't scream. Oh, my son might come in just singing a song randomly well, loud. <laughs> but this is okay. Hopefully, as long as we don't get a copyright strike, we're fine with that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, but anyway, but I think that's something you and I share in common as well is that we're not uh, ash ashamed of letting our messy lives be part of our our channels and whatnot because that's just how we have to make it work. Exactly. That's that's how most people have to make it work. So I feel like you really are able to like you know connect with somebody because everyone's got a messy kitchen very few people out there have a beautiful kitchen if if there are people out there then good to them but that's just not me <laughs> nice and i wanted to give a special shout out to um carolina and her grandson her nine-year-old grandson jeremiah who they watch both of our channels oh. on saturday mornings as part of their time together oh my goodness that is so cute <laughs> uh, and I I, and i believe it's his birthday coming up so happy advanced birthday to you buddy yeah, happy birthday. <laughs> uh, so uh, give, I, I did a bit of a brief introduction of the laundry list of things you, you did and tried over time, but maybe give us, and I'm going to take my sweater off because I'm boiling. So <laughs> while I'm doing that, tell us, you know, what, you know, what you did leading up to you kind of going whole food plant-based. And is it, is that the most accurate way to describe how you eat as whole food plant-based? Yeah. It's, yeah. Whole food plant-based, low calorie density style. You can call yeah. it starch solution based if you want to. There's a million different all ways. Those, all those terms, but yeah, <laughs> keeping it, eating real food basically. Yeah. So what, so get us started. So you're like me, probably I grew up overweight and stayed that way. <laughs> um, yeah. I was born. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so what, what, at what point did you start, you know, what was kind of the breaking point where you were like, I think I need to make a shift? Oh, wow. Well, there's so and, much. What that, did that look like? So much that leads up to that point, to be honest. Um, well, I spent most of my life um, living abroad. So I grew up in Ethiopia and Afghanistan and India and all those kinds of places. Um, so obviously there, you know, you know, 10, 20 years ago, there wasn't really much in the way of, you know, fancy vegan food, vegan cheeses, any of that kind of stuff. So I did eat a lot of whole food, plant-based stuff whilst we live in those places. And, and is that, are you like an army brat or is that the... No, uh, my, uh, my parents work for like the World Bank and the UN and places like that. So we would, we would move around a lot, uh, which was fantastic. And to be fair, there's some brilliant food, Ethiopian food, Indian food that is still my favorites today. Yeah. Um, so, so did yeah. you grow up with parents, were your parents vegan then or are vegan? Yeah, so I was actually really lucky. I'm a lifelong vegan, so uh, ah. my mom turned, pregnant with, uh, turned vegan when she was pregnant with me. So uh, yeah, so I'm very lucky. My, myself and my siblings were all vegan. Um, so uh, yes, yeah, so I've got a couple of little baby two generation vegans um, in here as well. Um, yeah, so I mean, I guess that's the thing that people often think is that when you when you go vegan, or if you are vegan, you're automatically healthy. That I'm here to say it's 100% not the case. You can eat a horrific diet and it still be vegan. Obviously, it's great for the animals and much better for the planet, but it doesn't have to be good for your health. So, um, you know, growing up, I kind of didn't really realize, I didn't put those two together. I thought if it's vegan, then it must be healthy. So obviously, I spent a lot of time overindulging in all those incredibly exciting vegan things that are out there. Um, especially, you know, as time went on and there was more and more available, you know, when I was a kid, there wasn't really, it was like one vegan cheese and that's it. So and what, what was it? What, what did you have over there? Oh, so like in Ethiopia and Indian stuff. Yeah. What was your vegan cheese? Oh, the, ve oh, the vegan cheese. It was like, oh my God, it was terrible. It was like, it tasted like feet 
and you like grated it, but it didn't melt, and it was like, oh my god, thinking. But I used to go like so when we lived in Ethiopia and India. You couldn't get anything like that. Uh, so when we would come back to England, we would be like so excited to get that one horrible cheese. We would just like eat it. Like, <laughs> I don't even know, just pick it up and just eat the cheese. <laughs> it's but terrible. you had never eaten actual cheese, right? No, no, I've never actually eaten cheese. Well, in fact, that kind of plays a part later in my story is I've owned a vegan cheese business for about for six or seven years, which I've just sold recently. Um, so vegan cheese is dear to my heart, but I didn't make the, I didn't make the rubbish stuff. I made the whole food version eventually. Um, but, um, but yeah, it was when we came up, when we came back from being abroad, we would come back summers and Christmas and stuff. And that's when I would get like, I would just overindulge in all of the food, all of the vegan food I didn't have access to in Ethiopia and India and stuff like that. So that's probably kind of where it started. Every time we came back for a few months, I would put on some weight and then go back and I'd lose it again. And it was just kind of a cycle. Um, and then my mom's always been very health conscious. So she was always dabbling in like raw veganism and stuff like that. So as a teen, I also, I was like, oh, that sounds pretty good. Cause I know it can be like good for weight loss and stuff. So I also dabbled in some raw veganism, um, which it, it d did work, it does work. And you know, there's, there's nothing bad with being raw vegan. I think it can be fantastic. But for me, it ended up being extremely restrictive uh, for a very large portion of time, which wasn't good for me and it wasn't sustainable for me. And I was never ever satisfied. Um, and and for a long period of time, I would yo-yo between being raw vegan and then I was like, I can't do this anymore. And then I would just be like full junk food vegan, eating everything, packing it on. And I was like, oh my God, I feel terrible. Back to the raw vegan. And I thought that was the only way that you could lose weight. I had no idea you could do it. Eating potatoes and porridge and rice and all those good things that we know now. Um, so, um, so yeah. What were some of your, your like uh, raw vegan meals? Like uh, the ones that you enjoyed? The ones that you're like, oh, I could, that maybe are even part of your, your repertoire now. Oh, well, now I know how to make a whole, whole host of different salads with incredible dressings and, you know, smoothie bowls and banana ice cream and all those kinds of things. But um, I think as, um, as a teen, when I was trying to eat raw veganism to lose weight, I would kind of eat very plain salads and fruit, which is great. But then I would be starving and then I would make like a ton of like date nut balls, like a bowl of date nut balls and just like, shovel them in like a hamster because I'm like I'm so hungry so it was it wasn't really very good but obviously in hindsight I could have done it better um uh, but yeah that was my my little dabble in raw veganism um but yeah so obviously back and forwards as a teen and then I went to university in England it was the first time I'd been back in England properly for a good chunk of time and also I was free from my parents so I could do whatever I want I could eat whatever I want and so that's when things really I, I kind of got into trouble I'll yes. also mention I'm a volume eater as as most people probably are if they're honest with themselves um so I need a lot of food like I weighed it the other week and I, I need 10 pounds of food a day to be satisfied and like just you know just my, my average so that's a lot of food so if you're eating that and it's junk food vegan stuff which is hugely calorific you're going to end up in trouble. So, I, you know, I spent my uni years, you know, in this binge restrict kind of cycle where, you know, sometimes I wouldn't eat anything all day and I would just have some hummus and carrot sticks at night because I was trying to be good. And then the next week I would have like three tubs of ice cream for dinner and like, you know, blocks of cheesy pizza and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it was, you know, you know, you know the drill, I'm sure. Yeah. When you when you weighed your that food, was that like cooked or or? pre-cooked that was cooked it was cooked so there was a lot of soups involved that, and all that but that's stuff. even more though because the, the yeah. water leaches out right so yeah, the... yeah so no that's i mean that's a lot of food i mean i do still surprise people these days especially especially my in-laws every time they see me eat i mean gigantic portions they're like you're not gonna eat that <laughs> and then i do it repeatedly like how how is this working for you <laughs> yeah. they, they still don't get it yeah, so for those who don't understand what 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 is a volume eat cuz I've never actually heard the phrase volume I, I know nutrient density and all that kind of stuff but I've never heard the term volume eater until I heard it on your channel. Oh really? Okay. So it's basically somebody I mean I'm assuming a lot of people are the same if they admit it to themselves, but it's somebody who just needs a lot of food in order to be satisfied. I know some people who can get away with eating, you know, a sandwich for lunch and then that'll do them fine. That's not going to touch me. I'm not even, I'm, that's, look at, that's going to do nothing. I need like, like really, really good portions of food. Like, um, you know, one of the ways that I, you know, lost weight is by figuring out how to eat massive portions of food 
that are low calorie density. So I'll preload with a gigantic soup before I move on to my lunch because I need a lot of food, a lot of yeah. volume, water and fiber to be satisfied. Um, but yeah, like I said, eating junk food, that, that wasn't a good place for me. <laughs> and do you think that's a metabolism thing? Like, do you think it's just that you burn some, I, I, I think that's true for a lot of people. Some people just burn faster than others. I mean, um, it, it might be. I mean, I've, it's not that I've always, in terms of my metabolism, I've always been somebody who can put on weight very easily. So I don't necessarily think I've got a high metabolism. I don't know. Maybe it's just something I've built up over time that I just, I've eaten a lot of food and therefore I still need to continue eating a lot of food. I really don't know. Um, but yeah, I mean, as a junk food vegan, I ate a lot of food, but I, you know, I don't think I had a very fast metabolism at all. But who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> So, I mean, I, I think a lot of people watching here have, have watched your channel. I know I have. I get a sense of it. Like, I remember, I think you just posted one the other day where you made this wonderfully massive bowl of porridge where it's like a bit a bit of, oh, oh you got excited. Yeah, I did. Uh, with <laughs> some, I, what I like that you did that I, I was doing, especially when I was losing my weight, is, is throwing cauliflower into the mix. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it's amazing. And I did as I've never done this before, but I blended it up. And when you blend it up, like cause I've tried cauliflower rice in porridge before and I'm like, I can still feel the cauliflower. I'm not a fan of this. But you blend it up with some bananas and stuff and then you don't feel it at all. You don't even know, but it just adds so much volume. I, I made the same porridge the other day without the cauliflower. And then with a couple of cups of cauliflower, it was just double the size. It was just yeah. amazing. So if, if you need to eat, if other people out there need to eat a lot of food, veggies, put your veggies, put your fruits in and you can just double, triple your portions without adding hardly any extra calories. It's incredible. That's my goal. My, my my general morning breakfast is some kind of oats, whether it's granola or oatmeal with like a fruit salad, like a giant fruit salad underneath that it. That has to be the main event, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And the oats are more like the binding that brings it all together with some exactly. nuts and seeds. And yeah, that's my go-to every single morning. Uh, Cause I've only, I, I, I've, I've realized I just want something like a little bit of sweetness in the morning. Yeah. And then I don't touch a lot of sweets throughout the day until maybe after dessert. Well, after 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 dessert, I'll have a second dessert. <laughs> second one, yeah. I, I'm a hobbit, so I have second dessert. <laughs> um, no, after dinner, I want something a little sweet. So yeah, yeah. You know. Well, um, I have a massive sweet tooth, and so that's one of the things that I didn't think. I had thought I had to give up all of my favorite sweet foods, like cakes, ice cream, all that kind of stuff. I could just eat that all day long. Um, so I thought that I would have to give that up, which for me wasn't sustainable, which is why I was never able to stick to any of these diets because I thought, you know, I never can have that again. But what I needed to do was just make them all whole food plant-based. You know, I eat ice cream, cake every single day. I have chocolate pudding most days, to be honest. Um, but yeah, you can do it with beans, you can do it with tofu, you can do it with, you know, cauliflower, all that kind of stuff. It's so exciting. Well, that's just it. It's like, that's what, when I discovered all those, because like, for me, I got really nerdy and loved it because it's just like a game. It's like, well, what kind of, how do I make this now? How do I do this? And it's like, and just tweaking and playing and, and mucking about, you know? Sometimes I'll just put, I'll just make a big batch of something, black rice, butter beans, whatever it is, like a huge instant pot full. So then I've got it and it's sitting in the fridge. I'm like, okay, I need to use you up. What, what are we going to do with you? So then I'm, I'm making all these things. I'm like, wow, I never even thought to blend that up and make a pancake and do this. And you can just get so creative with whole plant foods. And it's not until you're in that world, you don't even realize it. Well, especially when you just start messing with your leftovers, you know, and just go, I got this. What do I do with it? I'm going to throw this. What did I do the other day? I'm not going to remember now, but I did something where I was like, huh, never would have done that if I hadn't have put those two things together. Yeah, hundred percent. If I've got leftover sushi rice now, I whiz up loads of cauliflower and turn it into cauliflower rice put it together and I make cauliflower um, sushi balls. And it's like, it's so good. But I never would have done that if I didn't have loads of leftover sushi rice sitting around. Well, that's just it. It's like, and that's what I try to encourage people to do too, is like, look in your fridge, see what your veg what vegetables are sad. Yeah, yeah. And just, and you know, if they're really sad, then use them for broth. But, um, you know, <laughs> otherwise they want to go in a soup or a bowl or. or yeah, it's safe. Well, and it's just, just, and I think like people get like, get into such ruts because they just end up eating the same three to five meals over yeah. and over again. And then they get bored. And that's when you go, well, a, a takeout pizza sounds really good right about now. Yeah. yeah, you yeah. Know? Right. Where it's just like, I think like I try to push people. I'm like, just come up with like, like learn a sauce formula and just know that it's like, just go in your fridge and start throwing stuff around. Yeah. You know, and yeah. we've, and I imagine your kids are going to be masters at that because I hope you so. They're, they're already getting creative. <laughs> well, that's just like, that's our, my kids are too. And then, cause they, they grew up in the kitchen with us and, yeah. you know, and it was always like, well, what do we got? What do we, what can you do? And and they'll just, you know, jump in and they're, they're not quite 
like we, I didn't switch over as early as you. I mean, you switched over at birth, so. <laughs> well, yeah. So, so our kids eat mostly what we eat, but they do put a little bit of cheese on their stuff. Um, yeah. Because they weren't quite raised. They were raised more like vegetarian from birth. Yeah. 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 Um, it's amazing that you involve them in the kitchen. Sometimes that's the most important part. I mean, when I went to university, it's amazing the amount of people there who don't know how to like boil pasta. They know nothing about being in the kitchen. So what a gift to teach your kids how to like, some people obviously try and like preoccupy their kids with the movie or something before they go in the kitchen and cook. Get your kids in there. That's yeah. they, they find it fascinating. They learn and they can also put some good ideas on the table as well. Well, they'll they'll come up with stuff that I wouldn't have thought of, you yeah. know, and it, part of it is to appease their taste buds, but also it's like, oh, right, this would be really, really, this would be really good. Yeah. Kids' minds, they're so creative. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one person wanted, so you and I both, you, uh, you're, I'm down 60, you know, you're down 60 pounds from yeah. or yeah. 60. when you started uh, and I'm down, I was at one point down three times that I was, I was double oh. the size I am. I also went too far. Uh, and I lost, yeah, and I got kind of emaciated because I just got addicted to weight loss, and I was like, Ooh. "Oh, how much can I lose?" Yes, yeah, and you know, then, I, can, I can totally understand that because once you're in the, because you're in it for so long, like weight loss is a long process, right? It's not like a couple of months. You're in it for years and years, if you, especially if you have a lot of weight to lose. So then it's hard to know when to when to stop. Yeah, and I went from like a double X to a small in terms of wow. clothing, and I was like, "This is amazing!" But then people are looking at me like, people thought I was sick like really really sick <laughs> yeah but, but also it was just like it was to the point where i had lost a lot of muscle and other things yeah. so i i've been getting it back but that's also a head mess too how did you, yeah so how did you kind of make that change because I, I i mean I, I don't think i've ever taken it that far um so yeah that must have been really yeah. interesting. painfully and slowly where yeah where, where just because you you when you see yourself gaining weight again you're like oh god i'm gonna gain it all back yeah you know and, so really, it was just about like scaling back from weighing myself every day, yeah. you know, and just going and do it once a week, um, you know, and stopping counting calories. Yeah. Because that was just getting kind of like, I at that point, I knew I could look at any piece of food and tell you how much it was, right? I didn't yeah. need to do that anymore. My It was memorized in my brain. Do you so, eat differently as well when you were trying to like gain a little bit more weight? Did you change your diet at all or? No, I think I just stopped like restricting myself in any way. Okay. And just eat until you. Yeah, exactly. I'm gonna eat pretty much whole food, plant based, and eat until I'm full, and enjoy whatever I want to enjoy, and yeah. and just kind of monitor. And and it's kind. Of, I found it went up, and then it's kind of just stayed in the same little era. I I do yeah. my regular work, and now I, I think like you, I'm working on um, uh, muscle. I'm trying to gain some of that muscle back too. Yeah, because that's what I did, obviously, because I kind of reached the end of my weight loss journey. And I was like, oh, OK, what now? You're, you're absolutely right. You kind of not like I didn't get addicted to it, but it's like that's all I would think about for a couple of years. And then after that, it's like, oh, what am I going to think about now? Um, and then it's like it was so strange. So I had to dive into into something and I was like, OK, so obviously, you know, I feel like your health journey is going to be a journey for life. It doesn't ever stop. You don't go, oh, I've lost weight. That's enough you know, you have to work on loads of other elements in order to be healthy. One of which is, you know, maybe moving your body. And, you know, especially as you get older, trying to work on building some muscle and some muscle mass and stuff. But it is it is a very strange thing to go from weight loss to trying to build some muscle because I've seen a small amount of weight gain probably from muscle, you know, over the past few months whilst I've really been doing that. But it is like you have to like, you know, remind yourself, you know, you're not going to be going back to where you were before. This is a good, healthy kind of weight gain that you're doing here. So it's tricky. Yeah, and that's good to remind the people watching too that it's like the scale is not the best indicator of your health because yeah. you know you should be measuring your waist and those kind of stuff because it's really that it's where you carry the weight. Yeah, you know, exactly. and especially if you've lost a lot of weight, you're gonna have excess skin. Yeah, that, that's gonna carry weight that you know, it's your body's gonna look weird, not fit the way it should. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, exactly. No, I found my, I got to the point where I was, I was, I was feeling quite lean, but I was like skinny fat. I was like, uh, you know, I wasn't feeling toned because I had a vision of what I wanted to be like. And I wanted to be, I wanted to be strong. I didn't want to be like a, the smallest version of myself possible. I wanted to be the most healthy, the strongest version of myself. And, you know, so really trying to walk, work towards that at the moment, like it sounds like you are as well. But I, I feel like that's what I would recommend to most people. But I feel like somebody, obviously you do have to start with the weight loss. If somebody had told me to go to the gym when I was 60 pounds heavier, I would have been like, no chance. I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. 
So you have to, sometimes you have to lose weight in order to get to that point where you're okay to move your body again. Yeah, I was doing both. Like I was hitting the workouts hard uh, and cleaning oh, through the whole hands. process. Yeah, through the whole process. Um, well, because I turned it into a game. I went, well, okay, so this many calories is a pound. Yeah. And if I can burn this many calories a day and only eat this many calories a day, the math says, and I was losing nine to 10 pounds a month. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah, that's amazing. That's substantial. So, so I dropped it pretty quickly, but then yeah. it was interesting because, but during that, I was doing a lot of hit, like high intensity interval training, and yeah. during that process, I think I remember myself just thinking, "It's like, hey, once you hit your goal weight, you don't have to do this anymore." Oh yeah, you can like just an idiot. Stop. go back stop. to what you were eating before. <laughs> but to be fair, I think where my brain has gone is like, oh no, I don't actually have to do the hit anymore. Um, yeah. But now I, I was swapped that out with doing muscle training. And I still do a little bit of hip, but that it's more, my workouts now are more like muscle training and power yoga. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. I've never tried power yoga. Oh, there's cool. a guy, there's another that's YouTuber tough. that I love called Sean Vig, and he's so funny and interesting and he's great because he has a nice, a lot of different levels. Um, oh, I'll have to check him out. That sounds really good. So it's like yoga, but it's a bit more active. Right? I need to work on some flexibility. I've never really been a flexible person, so I need to do that. He Check him out. I think you'll enjoy him. I will. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, and how do you find when you, so tell me about that period of youth when you went from like maintenance into, or not weight loss into maintenance. Like what was that shift like for you? So, I mean, it was really just a mindset shift, uh, but I feel like I, like for the last six months, I've still just been trying to figure out, figure out where I am in terms of like my, my food, my eating and all that kind of stuff. And I'm really eating the same way now as I did when I was losing weight. The food hasn't really changed. I think I've incorporated more um, just a whole food proteins now just because I'm trying to work on building muscle, but not necessarily on purpose, maybe kind of on purpose, but more because I feel like that's the kind of stuff I'm craving now. I feel like when you're working on building muscle, you na naturally maybe go towards more high protein foods. So maybe that's changed slightly, but I've always been a lover of beans and I've always been, uh, you know, somebody who actively um you know says it's good to get as many beans in as humanly possible um but just i think the main thing that i've been going through is just listening to my hunger fullness cues and i talk about hunger fullness cues a lot on my channel how that can kind of be almost the missing piece sometimes a lot of people they say i eat perfectly i eat all the whole food plant-based stuff i'm not doing anything you know i'm not eating junk food and yet i'm still struggling i you know i've maybe got 10 15 20 pounds to lose or i've hit a plateau and often it's the hunger fullness cues. And I used to be somebody who would eat for emotional purposes, like most people do when you're stressed, when you're hungry, when you're, when you're tired, when you're all of those kinds of things, when you're feeling angry, all that, those, that stuff, um, or when you're bored. Um, so it's really trying to go back to the hunger fullness cues, which I find so important. So even the last month or so, if, you know, we went on holiday and I felt my hunger fullness cues slipping a little bit and I was just eating more food than usual. And now coming back, I'm like, okay, be on track because even though I'm building muscle, I definitely don't want to overeat. So yeah, I've been, I've been playing that little hunger fullness cue game and I probably will for a long time. So what do you listen to? Um, Cause that was the one thing that I, I, that was the biggest thing for me. I'm like, well, how do I, how do I, and that's the big people ask, like, how do you know tough. when you're full? It's tough. It's really tough. And there's loads of different things I do. The first thing is, well, that I would ideally do on a daily basis. It's not stuff I do every single day, obviously. Um, if I'm thinking about food, firstly, I'm asking myself, right, what am I thinking about? Am I thinking about a nice bowl of porridge or some broccoli and potatoes? Or am I thinking about a chocolate fudge brownie? Or like, you know, what am I thinking about? If I am hungry enough to eat some fruits or veggies, then I'm like, yeah, I'm hungry because that stuff sounds delicious. But if I'm not hungry for broccoli and I don't want any apples and I'm like, no, I just need that brownie, that's probably not hunger. That's like, that's something else. That's something emotional going on inside. <laughs> boredom. Yeah, we've always said that to our kids. We're like, grab an apple or some carrot sticks. And awesome. If you don't want those, you're not actually hungry. My kids get so upset when I say that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's true. I say that to them. I say that to myself. Yeah. yeah. Or, um, or I find like a cup of tea or water. Yes, 100%, especially nighttime snacking. I used to really struggle with nighttime snacking a lot. Um, and so, you know, if af after dinner, I would walk in the kitchen, I would start like nibbling at all of the leftovers and just go and just find things. But yeah, having a cup of tea is so helpful. Also, brushing my teeth after I've finished dinner is like, no, no more food now. I'm done. I did so the same thing. I, I ex As soon as I'm done dessert or dinner, I'd say I brush my teeth because then I, I can't stand that. You mentally switch off, don't you? You're like, that's enough food. It's done. Yeah. So, yeah. But yeah, also just like, I, I feel like a lot of people get into the habit of like doing the same thing every single night. So I would sit in a certain chair, watch some TV and eat my snacks. 
So in order to get out of that, I would do something else. I wouldn't sit in my chair and watch TV. I'd be like, okay, I'm going to go and clean that room or I'm going to go and sit in a different, even just being in a different room or a different chair helps you not think about those same routines that you had before. So just kind of mixing up the nighttime routine, I found really helpful as well. Yeah. And then once you've done it for like a month, you're, you're in that new routine, you're, you're yeah. locked in. Exactly. So it's a short term thing, but, um, but yeah, that's, that's a really important one as well. But, yeah. um, so one of the questions I got in advance, someone wanted to ask you uh, how you resist junk food in our junk food driven society. Oh man. Yeah. That's a great question because that's really tough. Um, well, I think the first thing is that, and then this is like the most important one, the, the thing, if I could tell somebody who's trying to get into this way of eating, just to have a clean environment. And I know that sounds super boring, but if you've got junk food in your house, you're going to eat it. You know, you and I, we're not special people. We just have set up our systems in such a way that this is the easiest way to eat. So, you know, if, for me, I know that if somebody brings a junky chocolate cake or like a, a vegan one, but it's, if it's in my fridge, I'm going to think about it until it's gone and I might eat it. I'll probably eat it and then it'll be gone, <laughs> you know? So I'm not a special person. I just have got to a place where I just don't allow that stuff in my house anymore. And if it's not here, I just can't eat it. Um, and also, you know, hand in hand with that, I just make sure we've got a ton of fruits and veggies abundant everywhere in the kitchen. So if you walk into my kitchen, you'll see fruits and veggies. I lay them out on the counter so that if I'm hungry and I walk in the kitchen, I'm not going to, you know, rustle around for junk food that I don't have. I'm going to be like, OK, I see apples, I see bananas, I see oranges. Which one do I want? And then you just go and you eat that. Um, yeah. So I say, I said that's the first thing. Obviously, it gets tricky when you're talking about going out to eat and friends and family and all that kind of stuff. For me personally, I'm very lucky. My immediate family is vegan. My mom's vegan. My stepdad's vegan. Uh, my siblings are vegan. So they're, you know, whenever we go around to eat there, they have vegan stuff, and you know, they weren't whole foodsy um, when I turned whole foods and I was eating low calorie density style. They were still eating loads of junky things and oil, but I. I've hopefully I've probably been an example to them. So now they've totally switched up their way of eating as well. So now we all eat whole foods together. And I think when people see that you've made an incredible change in your life, they get interested about it. You don't have to chat about it, but people ask questions. My, you know, my aunt, my cousin, my mom, they're all asking questions like, right, what have you done? Because everyone is struggling with the same thing because there's junk food everywhere. So everyone's feeling overweight and they're not feeling healthy. So if you can be the shining example, you can also help your loved ones, you know, go along that journey as well. So, I mean, that's incredible. So instead of thinking, oh gosh, you know, you know, I'm going to have to be the person who doesn't eat all of the same things as my family, maybe try and bring that stuff to them and see if you can make like their favorite foods, but make it whole foods and take that to dinner and get them interested and all that kind of stuff. So I would, yeah, that's the way I would go about it anyway. Sam, gamify it. Just like, I, mean, I, I want, cause I'm the same way. I have a sweet tooth. that's like, and I'll, we, and we'll have dessert most nights, but it's like you said, it's like a pudding or it's something, it's, it's a whole food plant-based version of it. And then I don't feel bad about eating it. Yeah, you can go for it. Exactly. Okay. So like, the other day I had sweet food all day long. I had ice cream, I had cake, I had a huge chocolate pudding and I had loads of fruit salad. That's it all day long. <laughs> it's like my dream. It's a kid's dream. You, uh, <laughs> you really can just eat incredible food. And you know, talking about my kids. So when my little boy was born, uh, for the first one and a half years of his life, I wasn't eating this way. I was more junky, Ben and Jerry ice cream, vegan, of course, but you know, all that kind of stuff. So he would get into the habit of that. But now we have no junk food in the house. So my kids crave fruit. Like they obviously have a massive sweet tooth, but they'll just ask for fruit all day long. Sometimes I make a huge dinner or whatever it happens to be. And they're like, no, mommy, we just want fruit. So I'll make them a huge fruity platter. I mean, isn't that amazing? So when you clean out your environment, you're doing you like you're helping everyone in your household. Yeah. And I'll say it's even it's funny. Um, we went to a family camp a couple of weeks, a couple of years ago uh, for the first time. And 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 not to say they didn't have some healthy options or whatnot, but the kids had access to junk all day yeah. long, too, if they yeah. wanted to. Um, and but by the end of the week, all they wanted was like a bowl, like a grain. They wanted okay. to come home and just have vegetables. And yeah, well, they're just like, it's just, well, I think also it's just their systems. It was hard on their systems. And oh, my gosh. Yes. A hundred percent. If we go away, my little boy does love bread. So sometimes, like, we went to France last year, and there wasn't really much to eat there, and he didn't like some of the stuff. So he ate a lot of bread, and his his whole system got so messed up. It's amazing, like, just in a week. And then we came back, and we got him on the fruit and veg again, and he was sorted. But it's, like, you know, loads of people, they just, they really struggle with their systems, which is which is so which is so horrible and obviously painful. 
Yeah. So now I'm going to ask you something someone asked me to ask you. They, they thought we'd be embarrassed talking about this. I'm certainly okay. not. And I don't think you will be either. Okay. Uh, it, it comes back to your volume eating. Okay. Do you have challenges when you go out? If you have to go out in public, Yeah. basically it's like, does the bathroom become an issue when you're a volume eater? Oh, I see. I see. Okay. Yeah. Great <laughs> question. I get asked about all, that all the time. Like you must have loads of gas or how often do you go to the toilet? All that kind of stuff. And it is really something to consider because I feel like people don't understand how often you should be going to the toilet. People have really skewed conception because they're not eating the right stuff. You know, when you eat a standard American diet, like my sisters who aren't vegan and who live, and they're my half sisters, you know, sometimes they wouldn't poop for a week. I'm like, oh my God, you must and they think that's so normal. much pain. Like if that's the normal, I don't want to be normal. Like your body should be going regularly, like multiple times a day. And that is that's absolutely what you want because that means you have a healthy system. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so obviously I do go to the bathroom multiple times a day, as I'm sure you do, as I'm sure anyone who eats this way does. I have never had any issues in terms of going out and about. There's always toilets if I need it. The main thing, because I've been <laughs> pregnant twice, I need to pee all the time. So that's my main issue is I'm, I'm always needing to pee. But you know, that's a totally separate issue. But no, um, yeah, really great question. And you know, in terms, of, in terms of gas, people ask me about gas a lot because if people aren't used to obviously a high fiber food, with loads of beans and legumes and cruciferous veggies, it can be really difficult and you can experience a lot of pain and gas. And in fact, I did when I switched to this way of eating, I wasn't used to all the fiber. Um, I don't know if you experienced the same thing as well, but I, I experienced a lot of gas and your gut microbiome obviously just needs to get used to the new foods that you're actually giving it. So it took me maybe a month or two and then that completely went away. And now I feel normal eating as many beans, um, you know, Brussels sprouts as I want. Yeah, I, I I'm very similar. Like I I'm very regular. I go to this. I go to the bathroom at the same time every single morning. That's uh, amazing. And, then, and sometimes there's a matinee. That's, yeah, that's, that's perfect. <laughs> but that's, that's just it. Where and where I know most people are like, well, every two or three days is like that. Oh you gosh. need to have some more kale. I can't imagine. I mean, you'd feel so uncomfortable with all that food stuck inside you for days and days. Oh my goodness. Well, that's just it, right? And, and and I think because it's like I think you know I've never considered myself a volume eater, but I think that's definitely. Uh, yeah, definitely uh, in the cards for me. But um, I don't know. It's just I've always been very regular. I did a video on poop on the on the channel. You can watch. It's called the yeah. Scoop on Poop. So the oh, <laughs> I'll definitely check it out. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and it well, it just talks about too. It's like what your poop should actually look like when it's healthy, you yeah. know, without getting too grotesque. But it's just yeah. that idea of like that. people don't know. So I grew up thinking that if my pee was white, it was something wrong with it because I didn't oh, realize wow. you're supposed to drink. Like mine was never bright yellow or anything. Yeah, yeah, but, you yeah. know, I always thought peas was supposed to be a little bit yellow. Oh my goodness, no! no then no, I started no. hydrating <laughs> properly, and I realized, oh shoot, I was dehydrated my entire childhood. Oh wow, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, if you have food stuck in your system for days at a time, that's going to lead to things further down the line: stomach cancer, all that kind of stuff. You want to have that fiber going through you constantly. Um, so yeah, that, that's, that's yeah, it's really important. Great question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'll get to, I have a bunch of other things, but I think I'll get, I think we have a bunch of questions piling up. One thing I wanted to ask you, someone else asked me to ask you is because you are so creative in your kitchen and with your kids, do you have any creative outlets outside of the kitchen? Oh, great. Yeah, great question. So I used to, I used to love art. I used to do a lot of painting and I used to really be into that. Um, I haven't done it in a really long time. I also used to play guitar. So I think I've always been kind of creative and you know all that kind of stuff that's always kind of just lived within me but I, in all honesty I've always been a foodie I love food and I've always loved getting creative in the kitchen even when I was a junkie person I would still have fun getting creative in the kitchen so that's my main passion and like if I can like throw an incredible meal together out of like two little leftover pieces of leek and something else that is like that's so fun for me I love that um so yeah so really that is my main passion and my main source of creativity at the moment but yeah I, I just generally love getting creative love getting my kids creative um and yeah I don't know are, are you are you the same I mean you seem like you're super creative in the kitchen as well you can rustle loads of stuff up yeah I'm creative in the kitchen uh and I'm my my background is I'm a filmmaker you know oh, so really? oh wow so you have sure. that creativity going through you yeah that's right. Yeah. And so I still work that way. I teach sometimes in film. So I've always worked. I've never had a real job after right. high school. I've always Ooh, kind of worked. <laughs> yeah. I've always worked in the arts some way. So um, yeah. I've always done this. And so shifting over to to doing some work on YouTube was kind of a natural fit in a way. Yeah. Once, I, oh, yeah, yeah. Once, I, 
once I kind of decided to do to do more of that. Um, actually, that's a good question for you. So I want to ask that as well. I was curious, your journey, like what was your like impetus to start putting your story out for other people? Because I know people yeah. have asked me that before, not necessarily in the channel and whatnot, but they've asked me in my personal life. And I was curious if, if you're comfortable talking about it. Well, what, of course. Uh, I mean, it is obviously, you know, when, as a kid, people used to say, you know, the jobs that you'll have in the future, they haven't been created yet. And I was like, what do you mean? But it's so true. Like, I never thought that YouTube and Instagram could be a job. It sounds, it's, it, even when I say it to myself now, it sounds absolutely crazy. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so I, I never intended it to become anything like that at all. In all honesty, when I, um, when I decided to eat this way, I knew that I wanted a sense of accountability. I wanted to tell people about what I was doing so that it would help me stick to what I was doing. So I just started posting on Instagram and I decided I made a deal with myself that I was going to post every single thing that I ate and I was going to post on Instagram. Not for anybody else, doesn't matter if anybody looks at it, just for myself, just to say, right, that's what I've had. Almost like a little journal, but I just did it on Instagram for some reason. Um, yeah. and also along the line, um, I found that it really helped me um, look at my food differently because, you know, you can put some food together, but when you make food look incredible, and especially if you know that some people might be looking at it, you put the rainbow on your plate. So when I started putting the rainbow on my plate, you know, sometimes I'd look at my plate and it didn't look colorful. I was like, okay, we need to add some more fruits and veggies into here. So I would, I would, I'd go put some more tomatoes on, put some pineapple and put all that stuff on. So it really helped me create that rainbow and the vibrant fruits and veggies that I needed. So, um, so, I, so anyway, that kind of spurred me on. I kept on posting and I kept on posting. Um, and then obviously as my weight started to fall off, I was kind of chatting about that and people were really interested in it. Um, and it kind of just snowballed from there really. Obviously I get creative with food. So people are like, oh wow, your food looks amazing. Uh, would you do a meal plan? Because I'd love to, you know, try some of your stuff. And I was like, yeah, sure, I guess. So I put a little meal plan together and then people were like, yay, this is so good. Um, so then now I have a few different meal plans um, and I'm currently working on an Indian oil-free vegan weight loss cookbook, which is super exciting because obviously I spent like seven years of my life in India. So Indian food is very like near and dear to me. So um, yeah, so I'm working on that at the moment. But, um, but yeah, so then I kind of naturally transitioned from Instagram, Instagram and I I, I love Instagram as a platform, but you can't do as much chatting. You can't be as open and honest and do all of those things. So again, YouTube felt like a natural transition to me to go hand in hand with that. Um, but yeah, I kind of just started off for fun. Um, and like I mentioned before, I did have a vegan cheese company up until up until this summer um and really that's actually to be fair that's where all my creativity went up until here is i was creating vegan cheeses cashew based cheeses nut based cheeses i would do like blue cheeses smoked cheeses all that kind of stuff um but when this started to kind of take off i realized that this was much more in line with my passion because i could be creative every single day in the kitchen you know when you have a cheese business you create one cheese then you just have to make it again and again and again to sell it. Whereas here, doing what I do now, I can get creative every single day and share that with people and hopefully you know, change, their, change their lives for the better and you know give them incredible healthy recipes that they can give to themselves and their family and stuff. So um, yeah, so I guess also just along the line, wanting to help people on their journey as well, um, a whole host of different things. But yeah, that's kind of where I got to where I am now and who knows where the heck I'll go. <laughs> That's the beauty of it. Yeah. My, mine's, mine's, mine's basically the exact same story where it was oh, really? just like, I think accountability was, I, I think I didn't realize it at, at the beginning, but I think when I, as I looked at it months later, I was like, right. I really can't go back from this without a lot of eating a lot of shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <absolutely. laughs> but which was good. Like, and, and now it's just like, that's just who, you know, you just become that person. Right. But also, you know, I was, uh, you know, and I'm sure you got the same way. You said you mentioned it with, with, um, you know, family and friends, but you know, people ask you a lot of questions. So for me, it was just more like, well, let me, I'm sure people everywhere have these same questions. And if I make a video or I make a blog post or yeah. whatever, then I can answer it for more people and whatnot. And so it's just kind of grown that way. Uh, and same as you, it's, just, I just really, really love the community that's built around my channel and other channels that you get to interact with people and hear on a daily basis, how some of the stuff you've done has really helped shift them and, and their way of thinking in their lives. And that's just like, that's so rewarding. You don't get that in most jobs. You don't, it's hard to believe that you can actually help people on such a level. You sometimes people are like, I've lost, you know, 40, 50 pounds eating the way that you eat. And I was like, that, that's amazing. You've almost given somebody their life back. You know, I mean, you know, 
our society is so lost and I feel like a lot of it is because of the food that we're eating and when you switch this way of eating not only do you get leaner but you obviously get to be the most healthy version of yourself and I don't know about you but I used to have I used to be somebody with no energy like I would be on the couch for like six hours every night like a blob in front of the tv I'm like I couldn't move after the day is over I now just have so much energy inside us. Like my life is different. I've got like a zest for life because of this way of eating. And I didn't know that was something that could change. So you actually give people their lives back when, when you start to eat this way. Yeah. I jump out of bed in the morning getting ready for my workout. And then I'm, yeah. and I'm excited for having a bowl of fruit and oats. <laughs> Isn't that like the old me would never have believed that was possible. But it's amazing how your taste buds change. And, you know, when you change your habits and stuff, I used to think that, you know, to eat healthy and to be healthy, you'd just be miserable all the time because you'd hate what you're doing. And I was like, well, I'm never going to do this forever because it's just going to be horrible. What you don't realize is that your enjoyment is so much more when you eat this way. Um, and that's what I try and tell people is that, you know, yes, you might have to put in a little bit of time where it's not so fun when you're doing the transition bit, but afterwards you're going to pick up a pair and you're going to be like, this is the best thing ever. <laughs> and also there's no guilt with it, right? Like you, I think that's part of the problem with eating, you know, the typical sad diet is like, you know, you shouldn't all the time. Yeah. yeah. You and do so, anyway. yeah. well, that's just it, which is when you eat, you can, and I, the way I think I've heard it said and that I like to echo is like, I can eat as much as I want when whatever I want because of what I want to eat. Yeah. That's, oh, I love that. That's fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you want to eat 20, 20 pears and like, you know, a hundred bananas, then go for it. You wouldn't be able to, but you can feel free. <laughs> yeah. You, you, well, that's just, you'll be full before it'll actually get to the point where it would gain. Yeah, you get that cut off, don't you? Especially with fruit, I find you like with fruit, you can't overeat really. Like sometimes if you make like a healthy, pancake with like a chocolate sauce you can kind of overindulge on that but if you're keeping it super basic and you're like fruit and veggies you literally can't overeat on that so i always say you can just eat as many as much as you want great okay so let's get into some questions um let's from go, people I'll, I'll, I'll some more tea well we'll see I'll, I'll, I'll start off i'll just let you know where some people in the world are watching this from okay, uh, yes. they're all we got yvonne from ontario which, which is where i live amazing uh sylvie from new brunswick Jessica from Washington State. Hi, Jessica. Uh, I assume Tina from Florida. We've got Alabama, uh, Washington, Amazing. all over the place. So, um, <laughs> uh, and oh, oh, and Diane is wondering what time it is in the UK for you yeah. right now. It's late for you, right? It is. It's literally 10 o'clock, but it's my best time to, to work. This is when I do my creative stuff. This is when I get down to work because <laughs> otherwise the kids are in the way. Oh, and Carolina heard us talk about her grandson, Jeremiah. Oh, hey, and well, happy to see you soon. <laughs> we're happy to do that. Uh, okay, let's see if I got an actual question in here. Okay, oh, uh, nope, that wasn't the question. <laughs> but thank you, V. <laughs> Never know. Uh, oh, what brand of blender and food processor do you use? Oh, great question. My, my blender, I would love a Vitamix, but I have a really cheap knockoff Vitamix version, which now is unavailable. <laughs> But if I was to recommend one, Vitamix would probably be the best. Do you have a Vitamix? I'm assuming. I do. I do. Yeah. Uh, one day I would love a Vitamix. I'm waiting for them to send me one. But right? It hasn't happened. You, uh, let me hook you up because I know the people over there now. Oh, hey, um, well, if you can get me a free Vitam a Vitamix, I'll take it. But yeah, 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 now, yeah, yeah. I just use a cheap knockoff version um, and then Cuisinart in terms of my food process. So I love Cuisinart. The other trick to uh, Vitamix is, is that buy them refurbished oh yes because they're like half the price and they work just as well so that's go amazing. just type in like refurbished vitamix and you'd be surprised that's how i've always bought them that's amazing when my blender truly dies that's when i go ahead and buy a new blender so i'll do that it, it's already coming to pieces but very soon <laughs> yeah and the nice thing about the vitamixes in particular again i'm not like affiliated with them necessarily although yeah i'm gonna have an affiliate link for that shortly oh, hey, um, amazing go you but what's great about them is that they have a lifetime warranty you know, and we and we have had like a motor die on us. Yeah, we were making like plant based cheese one day, oh, uh, yeah. and they oh. sent us a whole new base. Oh, did um, they? Oh, that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, no so, questions asked. That's that's amazing. Well, as as somebody who's run a vegan cheese business, I have killed many a Vitamix in my time. <laughs> yeah, like like 10, 10 to fifteen, definitely. All right, let me see if I can find another. Oh, here we go. Um, what's the question here? Pushing nearly for years, I'm hearing that I need lots of protein, like 30 grams for breakfast. I find this so hard, and I love chickpeas, just not with my oat suggestions. Okay. okay. Well, first of all, let's let's answer this in two parts. 
Yeah. The protein question, like 30 grams of protein for breakfast. It depends what your goals are, unless you're like seriously trying to build some muscle, in which case, fair enough, feel free. Firstly, I'll say it's not that hard to get 30 grams of protein for breakfast, even eating whole foods. It's It can be relatively easy, and I do that on a daily basis. But there's not necessarily a need to do that unless you're working on something specific. I would say that like people obviously push protein a lot, which is unnecessary if you're just wanting to be regularly fit and healthy. What's your take? Oh, I also think that people just don't really realize how much protein is in most of their foods. Like oatmeal has protein in it naturally. Fruits have protein in it naturally. Exactly. I'd say if you're trying to bulk up for whatever reason, the yeah. one thing I will do on days when I have really big workouts is I'll throw a scoop of pro- like vegan protein powder into yeah. my oatmeal or my smoothie yeah. or whatever. And that's usually 20 grams right there. Yeah. And then literally all the other things that are in there will be at least 10 grams or more. So it adds up so easily. Yeah. I mean, I don't really use protein powders, but I'm still able to get like today. I, like I've just started tracking uh, my protein. I've, I've not counted calories or tracked anything throughout my entire weight loss journey. I've just focused on eating low calorie density foods. Um, but because I'm trying to build some muscle, I just want to keep an eye on my protein just to see, because I was just curious how much protein am I even getting? So I'd get like 90 to 100 grams every day, easy, without any protein powders, anything. Yeah. So, you know, like just the other day, I made an amazing porridge. Um, you guys call it oatmeal. And I just put half a pack of silken tofu in a blender with a couple of dates and a banana and some plant milk and then use that as my liquid for the oats. And it was the creamiest thing. It was so delicious. I do the same with chickpeas, any bean, butter bean, like whatever yeah. it is. Um, just whack it in there, blend it up if you don't like the texture, pour it in, turn your oats into something creamy with high protein, you know? That's just it. Silken tofu is just, it's just an empty it. flavored vessel that is just yeah. there for protein. And I, I am glad you mentioned, because I was going to say, because I've heard of the chickpeas, it's like blend your chickpeas with some oats and bake it. Well, no, well, oh yeah, make a, exactly. Or you can do like brownies, blondies with beans and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, you can really get creative. I did a really cool recipe the other day, which was um, red lentil porridge. So like you just, I just like, add dates and banana and stuff in with the red lentils and then you cook it like a porridge and then it just tastes amazing it's got the same kind of consistency but you could just add that in with the oats but there's so many like beans are my favorite thing on the planet like i could talk all day about beans and there's a million different ways to get beans into your life (laughs) yeah Uh, and the other thing too is that i've got if you want to for like a little afternoon snack that's not unhealthy um on my website i have like a chickpea cookie dough oh that's basically just blended up chickpeas with like some nut butter and like a little bit of maple syrup or whatever sweetener you want to throw in that's there. My absolute, yes, it's, that's my go-to. And then you, do, if you add a little oat flour, you can turn it into little balls, right? And I yeah. call it like fudge or call it whatever you want to call it. Add some cocoa powder, put a little raspberry inside. It's, it's super, super good. Yeah, absolutely. This is oh, interesting. Oh, go ahead. What were you going to say? I was going to say the other snack I created the other day, which I mean not created, is just like toasted edamames or like air fried beans. If you want something crunchy, like salty and crunchy, just like put some nooch and garlic salt on any bean, edamame or tofu, whatever it is, and just stick it in the air fryer. It's such a good little snack that you can have next to your meal. Yeah. We'll, we'll just do it all the time. And if you keep your chickpea juice, your aquafaba, yeah. like toss your vegetables in that, you know, oh. it add, adds a little bit of protein and it crisp, crisps it up similar yeah. to what oil would do. Fantastic. Without, without yeah, fatty. Struggling to learn the instant pot, everything tastes canned. I don't know how to answer that. I, I've never had that happen to myself i'm not quite sure what they mean exactly everything tastes canned here's one thing i'm you know what it might be uh, and i learned this recently oh yeah uh is that the ring inside your instant pot over time uh will get soiled maybe that's the right word like it'll start to brown. The smell it'll, and it'll, like yeah so here's what i just did recently is i got an extra ring oh. so when i'm making stuff like oats or just plain things i'll put in that new ring that's a great uh, idea. And then when I'm doing beans or soups or stews, I put on the old one that's already, it's, it's literally brown, you know? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. So you can notice notice the difference. Yeah, yeah I, had, I had oats one, I made taco soup one night, the night before, and the next morning I had oats, and I was like, my oats, <laughs> it's a little taco soupy. <laughs> <laughs> that's not what you want, unless you're going for a nice savory oatmeal, in which case that's great, otherwise not the best. Yeah. Uh, Mary says she loves your chickpea banana milk. How do you make that? Oh. Yeah, I mean, that's one of my favorite things. Um, just chickpea bananas, and you can add in some dates if you want, some water or plant milk. It's a chickpea banana milk. It's just amazing. It's so good. But um, I mean, also the other thing, I, I mean, I, I know I love beans, but you put it in your banana ice cream. Like I put chickpeas or any kind of beans or tofu or something in the banana ice cream and just it makes it super creamy. It's really good. 
Yeah, so can tofu in particular, right? Because it. Oh. Um, you can make any kind of chocolate pudding and then you can freeze it or whatever. I made um, ice cream recently using aquafaba. I had leftover oh. aquafaba and I decided to freeze it and see what it would do, and it works. Oh my gosh. Wow. You've got to tell me. Are you, have you done a video about it? Because I need to know about that. I think it's going to be upcoming in something. Uh, yeah, in our, we have a holiday video coming up in a couple of weeks. That sounds that amazing. I think you'll see. But it's literally, if you've ever made aquafaba whipped cream, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just take whatever's left over and freeze it. Put it in like a Tupperware container. Oh, and the texture's like a fluffy ice cream. It scoops out way <sighs> better than ice cream does. That is amazing. You should you should go and you should sell some tubs of that. <laughs> the problem is it wouldn't last. Like you can't, oh, I know, I know, problem. that's true. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Um, amazing. Uh, someone here is waiting impatiently for your Indian cookbook, as am I. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm working on it at the moment. It should be ready in two or three weeks' time. I've got a yeah, – yeah, I'm thinking like mid-December it'll be ready. Perfect. Just in time for the holidays. Uh, are you working with a trainer on your working on or are you doing – is everything self-guided? So I was doing it all by myself. Um, so, like, it was in the summer. I was like, okay, this is time for fitness, so let's do this. Um, so I didn't really know what to do. I was just doing some running here and there, and I realized I needed to incorporate some weights. So I found Heather Robertson on YouTube. She's got loads of great free workouts. So I was doing that for a while, and I realized that the weights that she was using wasn't going to be pushing me to my limits in quite the same way. And I, I, feel, I felt very intimidated by going to the gym. I think a lot of people feel that way if they've never really gone to the gym before um, but the idea of going to a gym was very daunting so yeah so I'm actually I'm working with somebody um, who I found over on Instagram who is fantastic she, uh, you know they work with um, vegan women who are wanting to build muscle so yeah so they've kind of given me a little workout plan and I like not having to think about it when I go into the gym I haven't had to plan it out I don't have you know like that just kind of stresses me out. Like, okay, what workout am I going to do now? They just tell me what to do. I go in there and I do it. And it's super handy. <laughs> well, it's great that you found someone that eats the same way you do too. So you don't yeah, I need to share information. Yeah. yeah. What about you? So I'm saying you go to the, you go to the gym, right? No, you know what I did? I did at the beginning when I was losing, but I just do it all at home now. I, I have like a couple, a couple dumbbells, some resistance bands and YouTube. And that is my gym. You can, yeah, you can definitely do that. I'll tell you what, the, one of the reasons, selfish reasons why I now go to the gym versus doing it at home as well is because I need my own time to myself. <laughs> my like, kids are older now. So I, yeah. when, I, when my kids are your age, I was going. Like as, as a busy, as a, you know, as a full-time mom, you can be exhausted. I mean, I love my kids so much, obviously. But sometimes you just need a little bit of time to yourself. So I would wake up at 5.30, come downstairs and do my workout. They're upstairs. They've heard me come down. They come down with me. They're trying to, they're on top of me and they're in my face. And it's really hard like, to do a workout that way. So I was like, I'm going out. <laughs> yeah. Although, you know what? My son now, he gets up and works out with me in the morning before he goes to school. Oh, that's my dream. Yeah. I mean, sometimes they try to, my little, my little one tries to do squats with me and that's super cute. Um, and then she jumps on me, but I would love to do a workout with my kids. That's yeah. That's amazing. That's what I do. I worked with a trainer for a little bit when I was first starting to get healthy and it was cool because my kids would want to, and his, his whole thing was like real like body weight only real world stuff. So he had like sacks of grain and all this other stuff around. And I remember yeah. one time I brought Annie and she was maybe two, three at the time. And she wanted to come in. So he just worked her into the workout. And so he gave me a towel. He says, Annie, hold on to the towel. Dad, lift your daughter. Oh, man. And, and is... I did my biceps <laughs> with her that day. And of course, and then he, and then there was this other thing he made me do where it's like, he's like, basically get into a squat and put your arms up. And he said, now, Annie, climb all over your dad. Dad, don't move. Oh, my gosh. Wow. And, just... and just like letting yourself be a jungle yeah. gym. That's a it's... great, that's a great one. It's core. It's just so, it was so cool. And just knowing that it's like, you know, oh, let, they're let really heavy. Run. Yeah, they are. They do get heavy. To be fair, my right arm is very strong because I carry Rami around all day. My left arm is weak as nothing, but my right arm, it can, it can do some good stuff. <laughs> you got to get Rami to remind you to switch up. Like, Mama, I know. I know. <laughs> She's old enough now. She can do that. Nice. All right. What do we have any questions here? Oh, uh, what is Vi asking? Vi is asking, your chickpea cookie dough ice cream looks incredible. Can we get recipe proportions? Uh, oh. oh, oh yeah. Is that something you posted anywhere where they I can? Did, yeah, I did. I posted a chocolate one this morning, uh, which was like I said, I'm a sweet person, so I started off with chocolate chickpea cookie dough ice cream, obviously. Um, so yes, yeah, so I did actually post a recipe for like not the chocolate version, just a cookie dough version that is in in my Instagram feed, um, probably like from a couple of weeks ago. So you can find 
um, the recipe there, but I just added cocoa powder instead. Um, but I could do another video. I guess people really love it when I do that. So I could do another video with the full with the full breakdown on that one because it was very good. There Actually, no, it'll be in my YouTube video tonight. So just go and check that out. There you go. Yeah, I forgot. Uh, Karen is asking, does Amy ever get tired of making food constantly? And if so, how do you handle it? That's a good question. Good question. Now, so there's a couple of things. One is we have to make food constantly because we have to eat constantly. So, I mean, if I stopped making food, I would stop eating. My family would stop eating. So I feel like <laughs> if you're the person who makes food in your house, you unfortunately have to make food constantly. Otherwise, you know, everyone's out. Um, but also, like I said, it's, it's, it's my creative outlet. It's my passion, um, not only to share healthy food with people, but I also just love making food and being in the kitchen. I put music on and I, I dance around and I have a good time. And, you know, that's my, that's my me time. Um, especially when the kids are both at school, I'm like, yay. Um, so, yeah, so I mean, I, I don't think I'll ever stop uh, my love affair with getting creative and making healthy food. Yeah, and we also, and, and Amy and I also both whip our cameras out sometimes and show you what we're doing. Yeah, we do. <laughs> well, yeah. That, I, and I feel like I'm talking to somebody. I'm not alone in the kitchen when I'm doing that, too. It's it's a weird little. Yeah, I know it is. It, it, it took a long time to talk to a camera. It's a very strange thing to do. But the more you do it, you feel like you're talking to, like, a, your best friend or something. You just kind of you lay it all on the table, right? Well, at least that's my style. I just yeah. Whatever pops into my head, I just chat about it. So So it's actually, yeah. So whoever watches me, you're my best friend in the kitchen. <laughs> well, that's just it. And I think that's how it feels watching your channel. I know I've had that feedback on ours where it's just like yeah. it feels like you're hanging out in the kitchen with us. And that's and that's by design, I think, a little bit for both of us where it's like I never we talked about this before we started rolling. Yeah. Uh, but that idea of like, I don't think anyone has those perfect, clean, well lit kitchens in real life that you see on other YouTube channels. You know, no, it's completely unrealistic and it makes people feel so detached from what they think could be possible. It's like you can only eat healthy if you have a perfect kitchen and live next to the beach. You know, you can only you can only eat that way, but you can eat healthy food no matter where you are, no matter what your kitchen looks like or how messy and covered in food you are. That's just it, right? <laughs> uh, Crazy Farm Girl wants to know if either of us have ever tried the raw food sweet potato wraps. Would love a video. Oh, yes. So are these the ones from Raw Food Romance? Because she's got a, um, she's got a raw food wrap book. My mom is actually raw vegan at the moment. She, her and her partner have gone raw vegan as of this summer. Um, my mom, like I said, she's always been into raw veganism. And so she's she's trying it out again. And so she's bought the book and she did make a few wraps. I don't think it was the sweet potato one, but she did the other one. Was it uh, courgette zucchini? I'm not quite sure, but it was actually amazing. It was really good. And if I had a dehydrator, I'd probably make them as well. So I highly recommend them. They were really, they were great. Uh, a dehydrator makes a big, big difference. I'm going to hook you up with a dehydrator, some people too. Oh, yeah, give it to me. Right. <laughs> that's, um, cool. that's just it because we just got we had a, a recent video where we had a sponsor send us a dehydrator. Uh, oh, and it was just, it's the nicest. We make the kale trips are so good. I, I'll, I'll I'll hoard out. It's, it's London Sunshine is the company. Oh, love them. They're great. Um, and so I'll try to connect you with them. That would because, be. Oh. Uh, so you do the wraps and stuff. And I think, cause I did a similar, we did a, a juicer, we made our own juices and all the pulp that was left over. I wanted to do something with it. Oh yeah. So I turned the, the vegetable into, I made them both into crackers, like a fruit cracker and a veggie cracker. But the veggie one was almost more like nori. It was like vegetable nori. Oh, really? That it created, okay. which was really, really great. And all, I, I, literally all I did was I took the pulp, threw it in the food processor, let it get really chopped up. And then I rolled it out the rolling yeah. pin and just dehydrated for a couple hours. Oh, fantastic. The crunch. And obviously it's like, it, what's, it's what goes into a veggie stock. So I'm sure it tastes amazing. Yeah. 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 Well, it's, and it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's tastes like the broth version of like a wrap, but more flavorful than like, you know, some, some of the wraps I've had before it's all, and it's all just vegetables too. So it's like, it's, it's the you best know, of all the worlds gluten-free and keto and all those things for the people that are into that. <laughs> Yeah, no, like I said, my mom's raw at the moment. So she, every time I go around to a house, she feeds me these raw treats from the dehydrator and they're so good, like kale chips and little cookies and stuff. So I'm dying to get my hands on a dehydrator. Not that you have to be raw to be healthy, but it's just a fun little thing you can do as well. It just helps you like play with your sad vegetables and fruit too and give them a little more life. Yeah. <laughs> like apples in the dehydrator, just a little bit of cinnamon. Uh, okay. This isn't a question, but I thought it was a nice. Com There's lots of lovely comments in here. I'm not posting. Thank you all for the amazing comments oh, and questions. So <laughs> uh, and Amy, so Janice just said that she wants to thank you for helping. She's you've made her less scared in the kitchen. 
Oh, that's amazing. I mean, food should just be for fun. And people do get scared about, oh my God, how, like my husband, <laughs> if I ask him to just whip up something, he needs to follow a recipe by the book. It's like every little spoonful has to be completely measured. Whereas you don't need to do that when you, when you, when you get a little bit of a feel for food, you can just chuck it in there. And worst comes to us, it's not amazing, but most, you know, the more you do it, it everything tastes pretty good. People yeah, I, ask me if I have a lot of fails in the kitchen. I don't have that many fails in the kitchen because you just kind of get a feel for it, don't you? Well, you taste and you adjust. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah, start small and you can always add more if you want to. I used to be more more anal that way, and my wife kind of beat that out of me. Oh, that's, yeah. um, and it's interesting because a lot of the videos we do on our channel, are, we do reviews of vegan cookbooks. Yeah, no, I've uh, seen them. The, right. Yeah, and but the, the and it's funny because there's a there's like. A division in the audience. There's the people that love it when I go off track and I do some swaps because either oh, we don't have it or we don't like it. And other yeah. people are like, well, you can't review a recipe if you're not doing it all the way. And I'm like, nobody ever does it perfectly. No recipe's ever been done perfectly, has it? I mean, unless my husband's doing it, actually, then probably has. <laughs> he just runs out to the shop to buy that missing ingredient and then he comes back. <laughs> well, and I was doing that. And I'm like, why am I stressing myself out this way? Yeah. It's like, you yeah. know. But it's more realistic and it's more relatable because not everybody has everything. And hopefully, I mean, I'm sure you show people you can kind of make, you know, that lovely meal, but you don't have to have it all perfect. Yeah. Well, just literally, Teddy, so just before this, uh, I'm working on a video for our audience using their recipes. And someone submitted us a lasagna recipe. And, and, and we literally had like two thirds of what I needed for the gluten free lasagna that we use for my wife. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then I went to the store. I even went to the store to get more lasagna and they were out. Oh, no. And I was like, mm -hmm. so I just got some macaroni and I'm like, the bottom layer will be macaroni. Um, I love it. <laughs> but then it. It looks fun. It's creative. I'm sure your kids will love that. Well, that's just it. It's like, it's not, it's it's still pasta. It's going to taste the same. Okay, it doesn't like, really make the make a difference. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Marie wants to know if we could each name our top five vegan flavorings. Oh. Uh, off, the, off the top of our heads, this will change every time you ask me. A hundred percent. Well, I mean, in terms of like nutritional yeast, I yeah. love, I'll sprinkle that on everything. I mean, soy sauce has to be my number one. I put soy sauce, soy sauce and garlic is just a no brainer for me. It makes any vegetable taste like just incredible, elevates it all. Um, I'm trying cinnamon, to cinnamon's going to go in there for me. Oh, cinnamon, yeah. That's, that's if I'm favorite. baking something that's not chocolate, cinnamon is going into it. Are we allowed to choose chocolate? If we can choose cocoa powder. Cocoa powder is a flavor. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> 100%. Uh, and then what else, what else is there? I mean, I so am, I, even though it's not super whole foodsy, I'm a love of peanut butter powder, like PB Fit. I love that stuff. That's so good. Yeah. I'll sprinkle it in everything. We have one in Canada called PB2. Mm -hmm. It's the same yeah. idea as the dehydrated yeah. Yeah. But it's powder. Just, it's Peanut butter is a great flavoring. Yeah. And then, I mean, uh, any nut butter, like just nuts in general, it's just so good. It's like anything with a little bit of fat, right? It's just going to give yeah. you unlock make other taste. flavors. Yeah. 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 So, so do, you, do you eat a lot of like nut, nut butters and healthy fats and stuff? Have you, did you eat a lot of healthy fats during your weight loss journey and now, or has that changed? Yeah. Yeah, I was never into elimination. It was more about balance. Like, yeah. I think I went along the way of like the nutritarian style, which was like, had this very, not regimented, but kind of like, you know, basically eat as many fruits and vegetables as you want. Yeah. But when it comes to these categories of foods, keep it to a certain amount. Like, and I think for nuts, nuts and seeds, it was like no more than, uh, a half a cup a day and if it was like in a butter form a quarter cup is the max okay, you know yeah. and so i just i kind of have those things in my brain going oh i shouldn't have more than that so if i'm yeah. gonna have like peanut butter on my toast or throw some peanut butter in my my oatmeal it's like a tablespoon or two will do yeah 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 i feel yeah. like i mean that's a great approach for some i i kind of had to do a bit more i mean i do still include nuts and seeds but i used to be a, I guess the word is addicted to nuts and seeds. So like I said, when I was raw, I used to eat like bowlfuls of just nut seed date mix. And I would just go crazy for that. So for me, during my, my weight loss, I really kind of had to be a lot more conscious. So, you know, I wouldn't have peanut butter because if I had peanut butter or something, it's kind of like that was my, um, my like my trigger food. I would be like, oh my gosh, I got to have it. And then I'd just be in the peanut butter jar. So I had to kind of be a bit more careful about those things. I can definitely incorporate it now. Um, but yeah, during my weight loss journey, I had to, I had to be more cautious, kind of like chef AJ, where she, 
you know, kind of can't have certain things that she, you know, um, her. really overindulge in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Joe is asking, is James E. vegan as well? And how would you feel if Roms and Abe decided not to be plant based when they were older? Oh, man, that's a hard question to even think about, isn't it? <laughs> um, so, yeah, my husband, James, is vegan. He wasn't vegan when I met him. In fact, when I met him, he was like, I will never be vegan. My kids will never be vegan. He was like, he was the guy who would just eat a hunk of cheese and just dip it in butter as a snack. And I'm like, what, what are you doing? <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so anyway, he, he got there eventually. But yeah, I mean, I feel like, obviously, as my kids grow older, as I'm sure, you know, yours as well, you know, we can't tell them what to do for the rest of their life. So they're going to go off in the world. And what if they're going to, you know, not be vegan at some point, then fair enough. But I feel like, you know, the teachings that we give them, you know, the way we um, talk to our kids and explain to them why we're eating this kind of stuff and all about healthy eating and feeling good, especially as they get older, and also teaching them to make healthy food, but also make delicious healthy food, they're not going to be as likely to want to, you know, reach out to other things, I think, anyway. You know, my kids know that they can have muffins and cookies and cakes and all those kind of things, but they can be super healthy. So I feel like, you know, if you were just to say, we're never having cookies again, and then they see some cookies, they're going to probably go for it. But if you offer them loads of you know, if we go to a birthday party, for example, I'll make Abe a cake and I'll make him some, you know, some biscuits or something and he'll take his favorite food. So he's not feeling left out. Um, but yeah, obviously it's tricky. Have you, I mean, obviously as your kids grow older, what are you, what are their kind of thoughts with that? I mean, yeah. It's a My daughter is still very much like they, they still put a little bit of cheese on things from time yeah. to time. Uh, yeah. And my son has started, I think they just get, they get to an age where they just are curious about certain things. Yeah. Yeah. So he um and they and they do have some fish. Our kids have always had a little bit of fish. Yeah. Uh, and that's what I I was pescatarian before I went vegan fully. Okay. Yeah. And so they've kind of remained that way, but they don't eat a ton. It's like once or twice a month they'll have some fish. Okay. Honorary. You know. Yeah. Uh, and so I think it's just, it's interesting. Like as I thought by this point in time, my son would try like like meat meat like beef and stuff, and he hasn't, he hasn't yet. He hasn't no. been interested. No. I think he's where we've always warned him. It's like it's gonna be rough on your stomach like it's going to take a beat like it's your stomach's not used to that kind of it's, it's a a different yeah for the digestive system absolutely yeah. yeah so but we're the same mentality it's like they're going to do whatever they're going to do but yeah. we've given them a solid foundation that that's they can you, yeah that's all you yeah. can do i mean in every aspect aspect of parenthood that's all you can do you never know where they're going to go you just have to give them as much knowledge so they can make their own informed decisions. I mean, obviously, I'm a lifelong vegan. So is my brother and so is my sister. And we all remain vegan because, you know, we had those kind of solid foundations as a kid to understand why we're actually doing this. Yeah, uh, this is quick. Uh, Amelia wants to know if dehydrators use a lot of electricity. They actually don't. Uh, oh, they, I shouldn't say that. The one London Sunshines don't. Um, I would honestly like running my dehydrator for eight hours takes up less electricity than running my oven for half an hour. Wow, really? Oh my gosh, that's amazing. So I never, that, I never knew that. So you, I, yeah, you can just keep that on. <laughs> well, that's just it. So I can't speak to all dehydrators, but I, you know, when, when I wanted to like rep this one, I wanted to make sure. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So, no, that's, a, that's a great test. Well, I'll let, yeah, I'll be curious as to my mom's dehydrator because she has it on 24 7. So I'll do a little <laughs> check on that one too. <laughs> Go check her meter. Um, have you ever made chickpea tofu? I, um, I think I probably have, but I haven't filmed it. But I have filmed a butter bean tofu. You can make tofu out of obviously any bean or legume or anything. I've done a red lentil tofu. Um, How do you do? It? I've always wanted to. How do you do it? Oh, so basically, so with the butter bean tofu, for example, you just soak it. Don't cook it. So you soak it, and then you just blend it with some water, and then you just cook that down in a pan until it's not. Obviously, you don't want to. You want to make sure it's not um, raw anymore. So just you cook it down, and you'll kind of get a feel for when it stops being raw. And then you just, um, you know, you just put it in the fridge in a in you know a Tupperware or something. The next day, it just pops right out, and it's tofu. It's fantastic. You, you can do the same with red lentils, any legume, any bean. This is what I'm saying. I love beans. I love beans so much. <laughs> okay, I gotta give this a shot because I've been yeah. meaning to wanting to try it. Um, yeah, I mean, try. It. I'm gonna. I'm, I was gonna do a full series of different tofu's where you do like mung bean tofu and chickpea tofu and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, it's a. It's I nice. should do that in, in testament with my family. That's another. It's a money. Group. It's a money saver as well. I don't know about where you are. Like tofu is expensive. Like. I've just spent like 15 pounds on tofu this evening. That's a lot of tofu, uh, especially if you love tofu. So making some, you know, if you buy bulk beans, you can churn out so much tofu. It's brilliant. And it freezes really well too. Yeah, absolutely. Beautiful. Um, 
What is your favorite easy, quick, simple dinner lately? Oh, you, you got 20 minutes to make dinner, Amy. What are you making? Okay, well, pro probably pizza, probably pizza, because I always make sure I have some oil-free wraps in the freezer at all times because they are my backup meal. I mean, there's loads of backup meals, but like, you know, I can turn leftovers into anything. But if I have nothing, um, like yesterday, this is what we did. I, had, I hadn't done a food shop in like two weeks. We had like no food in the fridge. So I just did pizzas for everyone. I just did like some frozen sweet corn, frozen spinach. I do frozen pineapple on mine. I make a quick little cheese sauce out of leftover tin and butter beans. Um, and that's like an incredible pizza. It's, it's done. So uh, that's, yeah, at 20 minutes, you can definitely do that with a side of salad or something. Love it. Yeah. And for me, it'd be like uh, a pesto. I could Because I can make the pesto in the time it takes to cook the, the pasta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. An easy one. Or stir fry. We call Stir fries are usually our meals on Fridays because it's what's left in the fridge. You can put anything in it. It's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. I mean, to be fair, a soup's also great as well. If I'm low on time and if I want to get rid of a bunch of ingredients, just like heat it up for 10 minutes and blend it and it's going to taste good. Yeah. Uh, and then, um, so last question, and then I got a couple more things I want to ask you before I leave, because you, you must be exhausted. I can only. No, no, that's it. okay. <laughs> uh, and Marie is asking if you, if uh, you take any supplements. So um, I do take a B12 um, and D3. I try and remind myself, but I often forget. <laughs> But I would say I would say those two B twelve definitely. Um, I always try to remember to take that one. Yeah, so I take I take a B twelve. I take a D every other day. Yeah. Uh, and in the winter, I'll take a C. Okay. Yeah. I, I need to I need to do that to be fair because we get yeah we we need. It's that dark well. already. It's six o'clock here and it's like pitch black or five o'clock. Yeah, four o'clock here. I was doing the school run. It was starting to get dark. It's ridiculous. So yeah, so I also need to do that as well. But yeah, B twelve is just super important, obviously. Pitch black. Okay. So. Uh, we're going to start wrapping this up, but what are your must have kitchen tools? Say you're oh. on, it, it's desert. Someone's coming to your house. You're going to take everything out of there except for three right. things. What do you keep? Oh, with? okay. I get three things. Okay. Well, no, not, not it's like spatulas and like stuff like that. Don't yeah. count. I'm talking okay. about like, okay. So three things. So, I mean that, that you made it pretty easy. So the first thing is my blender. I need a blender. I use the blender. I mean, probably like 10 times a day. Like it's ridiculous. I'm in love with, I mean, it's a, it's a rubbish blender, but I, what is I, the, what's the brand you use? I don't even know if it's got the name on it. It's like such a, <laughs> such, a bad, such a bad, people keep on asking me and I'm like, I don't know what it is. I bought it like four years ago. The lid, the lid for the tamp has come off. So I have to like use my hand. It's like, it's a totally dead blender. Um, <laughs> but my blender, cause you can just, you can make anything. You make banana ice cream, any soup, any cheese sauce, any pudding and just anything basically. Um, so a blender, hundred percent. The next one, obviously you don't need to have this one but an instant pot is so handy. Like if you're like, making your own beans, beans are like bulk, bulk things, like a huge batch of rice. Like I, I've been using the instant pot so long. I don't even know if I could cook rice on the stove anymore. I don't even remember how to do that. It's like I like, have the same fear. So like, it's, I can't imagine if somebody took my instant pot away, I wouldn't be able to eat rice. <laughs> it's like, it's the perfect texture. Like when we go on holiday, we went on holiday a couple of weeks ago with my in-laws. I took my instant pot. I take my instant pot when I go camping as long as there's a little place to plug it in so i take that everywhere i go because i mean you can just you can do everything like if you've got nothing else you can do a porridge you can do a one pot pasta you can do a huge soup you can like, all the things yeah. um and then lastly it has to be my air fryer i love i love air frying just anything um because it always just tastes good nice and crispy it's a great way to cook without oil um super fast just learned that you can put sweet potatoes in the air fryer and you don't have to turn on the oven and it blew my mind oh. i was like why have I been turning on this oven for all of my life? So, um, yeah, so my air fryer is a good one. Sweet potatoes in the air fryer. No, I make that a lot. And it's just really great for reheating your food, too, instead of a microwave. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The, it's just a different kind of crisp and whatnot. Yeah. Would you, would you have the same three or are you going for different ones? Yeah. 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 I think so. Uh, like even like the we have we have an instant pot at our place in the country as well because it's just we just use it that often. It's a staple. Uh, yeah. And we haven't gotten to the point where we and we have a second Vita mix there as well. Oh really? Yeah. Well, it's telling my mother in laws, um, but we have one there, and we haven't quite gotten to the point where we got an air fryer for there as well. But I know I would use the heck out of it if we did. It's probably a matter of time. <laughs> yeah, and the oven we have there is convection, so it's uh, yeah. So that helps. That does the job. But yeah. yeah. So those. My, I mean, my food processor would be a close. I was debating that one. Yeah. Well, it's tough between um, the food processor and the blender because I'm like, they can kind of both do the same thing. I find for like, I I 
don't love the my big only beef with the Vitamix is always that I always feel like I lose like 10% of whatever I make in it. Oh, the, it, the last bit. I'm there. I'm scraping. <laughs> yeah, you need special scoops. So that's my only where I feel like with a food processor, I can get most of it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's true. But yeah, but yeah, that's that's definitely yeah. That's a, that's a close one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So now the last question. Say you're talking to Amy from from the beginning of your journey going whole food plant based. If you could give her uh, some tips for starting out, things that you wish you knew that you maybe struggled with and made harder for yourself than you needed to, what would you tell her now? Great question. I mean, there's a lot of there's there's so much there's so much I could tell that old Amy to be honest. Um, aside from uh, being easy with yourself and realizing that it's going to be a long time, it's not going to be an overnight fix. In terms of what to eat, obviously whole food, plant-based, low calorie density stuff with a high priority on fruits and veggies. You know, that is, that's where it should be with starches to accompany it to keep you satisfied. Those two are like uh, veggies and starches is just like the golden, I mean, obviously the starch solution, 50, 50 plate, um, you know, that's kind of how I eat now, but like have, if you're wanting to achieve maximum weight loss, um, then get as many veggies into your life as humanly possible. Start the day with veggies if you need to. Have soups to preload. If you're hungry, eat veggies and pair it with your starch to keep you satisfied. And obviously, if you've got a sweet tooth, then fruit, fruit, fruit all day long. Um, I mean, the other thing is um, find a way to enjoy your food and turn the foods that you used to love into healthy versions. You, you know, don't say, I'm never having ice cream. I'm never having pizza. I can't have burgers again. You can have everything that you want. You never have to feel like you're going, you're, you know, you're depriving yourself if you just learn how to make it in a healthy way. So, um, so you know, there's a million different recipes on Instagram, on YouTube, online, everywhere. Just type in starch solution friendly pizza or whole food plant based ice cream or whatever it is you're wanting to find. Do a little bit of research and then add that into your weekly rotation. Um, I mean, you know, the next thing that I did uh, was at the very beginning when it was a bit overwhelming is I just chose like five to 10 main meals and I just made that on rotation. You don't have to get creative in the kitchen like you and I do, obviously. I mean, we love doing that, but you don't have to do that. If, you, if that's overwhelming and if you're not a foodie person, just keep it basic. Most people tend to eat the same meals on repeat no matter what diet they're eating, standard American or otherwise. Um, so just choose five to 10 meals that you know you love that are fantastic for maximum weight loss, low calorie density style and eat them on repeat and then you're sorted. Um, yeah. And then I guess the other thing, which I think is really important in terms of when you're going out, like when you're leaving the house and you're going out into the big, wide, scary world where it's all junk food, is you've got to take food with you. And I know it sounds super boring, but when you build it up as a habit, it's not so bad. And you can take really delicious food with you. You can take, you know, sweet potato brownies and all that kind of stuff. But get into the habit of taking food with you, because if you are out and you get hungry, you're going to eat whatever the heck there is there. You're going to dive into those donuts or, you know, wherever you are. So always make sure you bring food with you. Um, that was a real, you know, important one for me anyway. Well, thank you so much for your time. This is I, I've, I could chat with you for another three hours. Yeah, I've had such a good time. Thanks so much for having me on again. So Great. before before that you go, uh, I, I've got all of your information in the description down below, your website and whatnot, where you've got your your ebooks that people can get your recipes from. But is there anything else? You mentioned your Indian cookbook that's going to come out shortly, but is there anything else you want to let people know to, to look out for or places to find you? Uh, well, I mean, I mean, I'll be working on a whole host of different things, um, you know, in the years to come. But at the moment, as a full time mom, I can only do so much. So I've got a few meal plans, and my Indian cookbook is on the way. So if you love Indian food and you want to, you know, get lean whilst you're eating it, um, then you've got a few weeks to wait. And then, yeah, that's, there's some incredible recipes in there. But yeah, I think that's about it. Well, I can't wait for that. Uh, thank you to everyone. That's why well, we had a great audience turnout today. Lots of good questions. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for coming out. Uh, thank, you. thank you again, Amy. And you got a video coming up shortly in a couple hours. Oh, yeah. on, on I need platform. to edit it now and then hopefully it'll be up. <laughs> what, what's the video? What, 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 are, what are people looking forward to in a couple hours? Oh, man, it is a full what I eat in a day. I start off with the chocolate kind of, um, what is it, cookie dough ice cream. And then I've got a smoky pasta. And then I finish off with some really good creamy curry. So some good stuff. All right. Well, I know what I'm watching later on tonight. <laughs> right. Okay, I'm going to let you go so you can upload that. and. Yeah. Thanks, everyone, for watching, and we'll see you all soon. Lovely. Thanks so much. Bye.